guys, how you doing? Ron here with Tech Tips to Go. So in today's video, I'm going to relate to the altcoin that I spoke to about a couple of months ago or about six weeks ago and how it's doing now. So let's get into the video. All right, so before we get into the video, uh, let's just see how Ethereum and Bitcoin is doing. Bitcoin and Ethereum has pumped up probably about 10%. 12%, 3% for Bitcoin. So if you look at the chart here, Ethereum is 263, Bitcoin 9481. Bitcoin has kind of been stable. And like I said, you know, we're still in this bearish market and I'm glad I took the position, like I mentioned. So this video is gonna be based on sharing reaching two cents. So this morning I woke up, checked my phone and we were 0 0.021, 0 0.023 and a lot of people, when I made my first video on sharing or when I started talking about, you know, sharing being that new altcoin pick for 2021, I got a lot of heat. People were saying, you know, it's a garbage coin. It's not even coin market cap. Why are you promoting it? I got personal message from like people from the VeChain community telling me, you know, why do you keep talking about sharing in your VeChain uh, videos, etc. And uh, along the course of weeks and, and I would say about a month, I decided to change positions. And like I said, Try not to get too married to your coins, guys. Um, if you see the patterns and if you understand basic technical analysis and the positions of a particular coin and its its journey, its path, and its phases, like for example, if you know Ethereum or Cardano is not gonna have a main net or different phases that's gonna take a year, do you think that coin is gonna progress fast? Are you gonna get 10% gain, 20% gains? Guys, we're not here for 10% gains. I'm not here for 20% gains. If I wanted one or two or 10% gains, I'd be in traditional markets, right? But it's an altcoin season. And that's where I'm sticking with my positions and where I put my money or where I put my investments. For example, like I'm not saying Bitcoin and Ethereum are garbage coins. I still donate monthly like an, RS or, like an RRSP plan or like a 401k plan. I keep donating to Bitcoin monthly like an RSP, automatic withdrawal. You could do that with Coinbase. But I don't I don't recommend doing it on a pump. Like you have an autom you have an option in Coinbase where you can automatically withdraw, you know, two dollars a month and invest into Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. But if you understand technical analysis and if you want to learn, just kind of reach out to me. I don't do a lot of TAs because I don't like a lot of people following my bets because TAs could be either hit or miss, or you could just do it driven on speculation. So, anyways. Uh, I talked about Ethereum. I decided to sell a lot of my Ethereum because I could purchase back. And what I did with Ethereum is I put probably about 70 to 80% of Ethereum a month ago into sharing. And pe like I mentioned, people were saying sharing is a garbage coin, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But if you understand and if you watch my videos and if you join the group and if you talk to other people's, like I said, don't do your own research. Don't look at my calls only. Talk to three or four other people that are in the market, that have experience, that talk. Don't listen to other YouTubers or don't listen to just YouTubers. Talk to other people out in the market. Talk to people on Twitter. Talk to people who have a, you know, a good track record in history. And if you know me, I'm not here for pump and dumps. Guys, like I don't invest. If I tell you I'm investing into something, I'm usually long on it, okay? Or either, and I'll tell you if I'm short on something. I'll tell you if I'm gonna be investing into something whether I'll be long or short, whether I'm looking for a nice pump and then I'll quickly get out of it, I'll tell you guys, I'll be straight up with you guys. I'll never pump and dump in, in like our group. So anyways, let's continue on to the video. So Ethereum, yeah. So the reason why I got out of Ethereum is because I know phase one, phase zero, phase two, three, four, whatever, you know, that's gonna be coming up with ZK rollups, all that stuff for Ethereum. I decided to make position changes because I wanted the 200, 300%, 400% because I saw that coming you know, in Q2 or even the end of Q1, I saw how the markets were going. I knew exactly like the phase two coins or phase one coins. So when you speak to me and I talk about phase one coins or phase two coins, phase one coin is like a Bitcoin. Phase two coins are 2016, 2017. So your Bitcoin, Ethereum, your XRP, those are phase two coins, which I don't think you're gonna get a, a high percentage in this next bull run, right? You're better off with those hidden gems. And when I talk about hidden gems, one of my hidden gems that I spoke about was sharing, right? And like I said, people were just calling me out and saying, why are you talking about sharing such a garbage coin, coin market cap? You know, now that we went from like 0 0.0021 when I first got in and I was talking about it, 
now we went up to 0 0.02 because people understand the fundamentals of company the ceo who's behind it the partnerships the ndas that they have signed guys if you look at an altcoin just don't go based on they've got the best tech they can do high tps who cares about tps guys like to be honest if someone's trying to sell you on something because they have great staking and that you can make 12% or 25% or 30% and they've got high TPS, who cares? You don't need TPS. Like, to be honest, you don't need to process that many transactions per second because by the time your technology is adopted, everyone's going to have high TPS. And to be honest, you don't really need high TPS because even with traditional like Visa, MasterCards, point of sale systems, they don't process that many transactions per second. Right. And until adoption comes, think about it, like how like the adoption for cryptocurrency and payment, by the time that actually comes to an adopted phase, everyone's going to have decent TPS. So if you're buying an altcoin based on TPS and based on their tech with no enterprise adoption, no B2B adoption, no B2C adoption, don't buy it. Simple. Now, when I say when I look at companies like sharing and VeChain, the reason why I'm so bullish on that because they have a great use case. Everyone in their mother, daughter, pet, dog, cat, monkey, whatever is going to be using sharing. You're going to use sharing one ID. You're going to use it for um, for COVID passports. You're going to use it for sharing shop. You can use it for travel, car, etc. So much you can do. So many transactions. And with flowbacks and buybacks, what they talk about, it's going to be a killer coin. Because like I said in my Telegram group, guys, I have a free Telegram group. If you're not in it, join it. Because like I said, I don't talk about garbage coins. I only talk about coins that I believe in and that I invest into it. And if you want to look at my investment portfolio when I'm buying something, just reach out to me. Just say, hey, call me out. Say, hey, Ron, I, I don't believe that you bought this coin. And I'll tell you whether I bought 10 grand in it, in it and whether I still hold it or not. So you can ask me. And if you don't believe me, I'll actually show you. And if you want to do live call, I'll show you everything else. Right. But guys, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't do pump and dumps. But like I said in my group, I said this in my live stream, too. Right. The reason why sharing is so great is because they have one of the best use cases and flowbacks and tokenomics. OK, flowbacks. Every time you have an event, an event, a transaction, a purchase, a refund, a swap, uh, you book a car, you travel, you recognize OCR, recognize your face for your license, you do a claim on insurance with DPI insurance, that's, that's an event, that's a transaction. It might take six transactions to do an electronic visa on arrival. That flowback comes back into the sharing ledger and then the API calls out and purchases all those transactions that it came in. So let's say one transaction or one event costed 15 cents based on six transactions. At the end of the week, the sharing ledger at API is gonna automatically buy, called the flowback, they're going to buy that on the open market and then after that it's just pure like basic economics supply and demand because the master nodes are going to have locked up coins and everyone who stakes is going to have all of the shr locked up and like i said it, i know a lot of people that bag a million coins one million to four million coins and the circulating supply is probably like less than 700 million Right. There's roughly one billion like on the market. But right now, I think there's 700 million. And and when I mention only 1000 people can hold one million coins, 1000 people could only hold a million coins. And that's why when I said like when I talked about VeChain getting to a dollar or which one is going to get it to a dollar first. And that's why when I was saying, hey, if anyone wants to call my bet that I think sharing is going to get to a dollar first, let me know and I'll do a bet and I'll put money into escrow and we can make that bet. And whoever wins, whether it's VeChain, if you take the bet on VeChain getting to a dollar because I'm taking sharing to get to a dollar first, then I'm, I'm up for it and we can make it public or whatever. And you know, uh, that, that's how strong I believe in it. Like I said, only a thousand people can hold a million sharing coins. So think about that. Think about when the master nodes go live when everyone goes staking because they're, they're going to have a sharing app where you can do all the staking from the app and you stake on a particular master node. And if I get that master node that I've been talking about, I'll let you guys know because then I can show you uh, how we're doing progressively in terms of transactions because you guys know I'm like 100% real with you guys. So I could tell you exactly this is how we're doing. Transactions are doing well. We're doing very well. So then you're going to be staking. You're going to have more belief. You're going to have more confidence. Right. So join my group. 
I have a free Telegram group. So just imagine all the masternodes and the more people stake, it's supply and demand. There's not going to be that many sellers, but a lot of people buying and people are going to be willing to be buying at a high price because of the staking, because of the rewards, because of the, the limited amount of supply. That's why when you do your research, when you do your own research and you're getting into a specific altcoin, try not to look at a coin that has a huge circulating supply. And that's why when I talked about VeChain, um, they have a circulating supply of 55 billion. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, if you look at you know, a company that has a circulating supply of 55 billion, or for example, let's take XRP. Like, look, let's look at this. So the circulating supply. So let's look at this. Let's take a look at XRP. I'm going to give you two examples here. So look at, look at XRP. The circulating supply is very large, 44 billion. And I think it actually it was 99 billion circulating supply. So what would that put it to a market cap, right? It'd just be enormous for it to get to a dollar. It'd put it in a, a large market cap. And I'm going to show you one, which is somewhat of a competitor of sharing, but not really which is Traveler. So look at Traveler, guys. Um, they're a little bit of a competitor with Traveler. And I, I, like I said, I don't like to bash coins or trash talk coins. So I wish all the best with Traveler. Um, I think they have a great product. Sharing's a little different. They offer more than just paying for your travel with cryptocurrency. But this is what Traveler does. And they have a lot of relationships. So so shout out to Traveler. You know, I wish you guys all the best. I don't hold Traveler. But anyways, take a look at it. They have a very attractive circulating supply, only 39 million. Some people wonder, like, well, how did Traveler go from, you know, 0.20 cents to 85 cents, right? Guys, look at this. The circulating supply is only 39 million. If you're a holder of Traveler, not that many people are going to be able to get Traveler or hold Traveler. It's the same thing with sharing. Sharing only has like 700 million maybe circulating. And then when master nodes and staking and the buybacks happen, because the buybacks, what's what, like like a, like what I mentioned with flowbacks and buybacks, what's going to happen is just going to create that 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 pressure on the market, you know, supply and demand. Because the open API, that API is just going to be buying on the open market, the sharing token on the exchanges, right? And then it goes to the master nodes. So I think fifty percent goes to the master nodes, and then the other fifty is um, staked. It's going to go to the people that are staking on the master nodes, right? So every week it does that. Imagine, so every transaction that someone does when they purchase, you know, travel, they book a hotel, they do an OCR scan, they do something with the sharing, they do a swap, they do something with the sharing shop. All those transactions that accumulate and at the end of the week, let's say you've got like a million, a million dollars that has been accumulated based on those transactions, the open API is going to purchase on the exchange market, a million dollars worth of sharing, 50% is gonna go back to the master nodes, and then it's gonna be staked to the stakers. The percentage is gonna go back to the stakers. Now, don't quote me on this. It might be between five, I've heard anywhere from five to 8%. Then I heard someone say 20%. I don't think it'll be 20%, but I think more realistically is gonna be five to 8% for staking. But if you read the article on the API that Tim talked about, that's how it's going to work, but I might I might have not gotten 100%, but that's pretty much the rundown of it. So anyways, I want to keep it at that. Um, like I said, sharing sharing's a great one. If you want to learn more about sharing, uh, reach out to me. It's got a great, it has a lot of great fundamentals. And like I said, um, when we talk about an altcoin that is at two cents or, you know, it already 15x, already 10x, already, you know, it already 8x. Sharing is still a great altcoin to get into because if you look at that circulating supply, you know, does it really matter if you're going to buy it at 0 0.015, 0 0.012, or two pennies when I think it'll get to a dollar? I don't know when it'll get to a dollar, but I have, you know, I, I think it'll get to a dollar based on what we all do when we hold and we huddle our tokens. So, like I said, only a thousand people can hold a million coins. Even if you hold, you know, half a million coins and we all do our job to huddle and stake imagine you know the buy and selling pressure our, our investment and our tokens are just going to go like this because we're all huddling and holding people are going to want to get a piece of shr people are going to want to get a, a piece of sharing so anyways join my group let's do this let's just huddle and we're just going to create that pressure and we're going to reward so anyways guys i hope you liked the video um, reach out to me on twitter reach out to me in my free group message me personally if you want to know more so anyways guys i'll see you tomorrow